and Maddy, you're watching Utaru, where today we are joined by Tull Kingdom. How are you doing, guys? Hey, good. How are you? Very good, thank you. And so, I know you guys both had solo projects before you came together. How did Tull Kingdom come about? Uh, so, it's actually through work, which is kind of a little bit boring, I suppose. But um, Stu was working for the company that I was working for, then he moved back from London to Leeds and kind of like went from there really. It was never like, the intention was never to start a project or like form it into a band or anything like that. It just kind of like stumbled into it and started yeah. writing music I feel like a lot of the best things happen like that though, in oh, with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, so that's nice anyway. Um, and also the name of the band itself, where did that come from? Uh, so Tall Kingdom is a lyric from a song by The National, the band The National, um, it, from a track called Brainy the album box it and I don't know I don't it, I like the way it looks yep. I like the way it sounds it's Fair like enough, that's, two words. that's pretty cool that's that's a pretty cool way to put with a name yeah and um, did you have any sort of was that the first one you stumbled across or was there a lot of brainstorming that went into it before well we were actually called Amber before and the first idea was to release under Amber but then it turns out that everybody in music's called Amber I was gonna say I've so, heard of a band called like Amber Run and stuff like oh, that oh yeah that's nice yeah yeah, yeah, yeah don't worry about that yeah well, I've never heard of anyone talking to call Tall Kingdom. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. We, we couldn't really Google search it, so it was a winner. <laughs> so <laughs> not, nothing came up, so. Yeah, fair enough, that's a good plan. So I know your EP Frames came out in July last year. What's the reception been like for that? Yeah, the reception's been great, really. Like, we've been quite fortunate. I mean, the way labels work these days, like, you don't get the backing like you used to, especially as a new artist and being, like, a complete unknown. And, like, obviously it's a little bit strange, cause, like, say, Stu and I used to, like, write on the different projects and kind of, like, had a following for those, but this is done, like, virtually anonymously, really. Yeah. So, it's, yeah. From the ground up. Um, yeah. But, that, I mean, that has its benefits as well. You end up, the first releases are always, I think, the most true to yourself, because there's no influence yet. You don't know what people are going to like or dislike about anything that you do. So, um... Yeah, definitely. Like, I think, I guess when you've built up a reputation as like, yeah. you know, working on your own people sort of expect you to produce something in a certain right. way, whereas when it's in yeah. a project, yeah. you literally can just do whatever you want and no one can really say anything. Yeah, yeah. this yeah. doesn't really sound like either of us, mm. I would say, so, either of our previous projects. Yeah, yeah. So would you say like your music is sort of, if you're on one side and you're on the other, that meets exactly in the middle, is there more of an influence from one of you or is it fairly equal? Um, yeah, I'd say it's pretty even. By the time, from, from not having anything to having a finished track, I would say that, um, you know, we have like a 50-50 input on it. I think a lot of the way, a lot of the way the sound is shaped and a lot of the production, it's definitely all of you. Like I don't, I'm not good at um, layering the track kind of stuff. And then, but then, you know, the early process is a lot of session bouncing back and forth. Like I might start something or Rich might start something and then it all goes into a drop box and then we just pick sessions out whenever we feel like writing and developing them over months. And by the end, I'd say we're pretty evenly split on yeah. what comes yeah. out. Um, so sounds like it sounds like a good partnership. Definitely, it's good to Well, it seems to be working. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so going back to the EP, do you have like a favourite song for it? Is that like telling someone to choose their favourite child? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't know about favourite per se, but I reckon the vocal track with Leo is probably like the most yeah. the most accomplished thing we've ever done in terms of like melodically and also like delivering something like. Mm -hmm as a finished thing, because the vocal was actually written to a completely different song. Mm -hmm. But then um, we kind of like knew the vocal was amazing, but the music behind it was like not what we wanted. So to, to actually deliver that and it kind of come out how it did in the end was like, I don't know, probably like the best thing we've done, I think. Uh, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I would agree. I, I still listen to that track and I can't really believe that we yeah. wrote it. <laughs> but I mean, that's part of having a great vocal. You, yeah, uh, I mean, I've never really worked with vocalists before on the old project and, and the radio, so it's you you're listening back to something you wrote but with someone else really performing it and it, it creates a nice detachment that i've never had before so whenever i listen back to that track it's almost like i'm listening to it the same way as everyone else is because I'm really just listening to her yeah yeah so i know that like two of the four tracks from the ep had vocalists mm -hmm. feature on them yeah. is there anyone that you're sort of dying or dreaming to work with in the future i mean <laughs> if you could, or if you could choose anyone like, yeah 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 I don't know. Like, I'd like to work with more vocally. I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think something that's missing, not so, something that really helps tie a lot of this kind of electronic music together, are, are vocalists, guest vocalists, or having yeah. a vocalist. So I'm, I'm always keen to work with 
with vocalists and yeah. add something else. I don't know who though. Specifically. <laughs> Fair enough, well, I mean, we, I mean, we can't know. sing, so anything's better than what we can Just possibly. not you. Yeah, just Fair anything that's not me. Yeah. I mean, you know, do some experimentally, give it a go, try distorting your voice. We've tried. We've tried. There's <laughs> no amount of effects can fix Fair what enough. happens. Fair enough, it is what it is, you know. Um, so I was going to take us on a completely different track now yep. from vocalists etc to leads itself mm -hmm. um, so I've seen on your Instagram I've been stalking you on Instagram and I've seen you play Hyde Pop Book Club quite yeah. a lot which is a gorgeous yeah. venue in like the basement downstairs yeah. is there anywhere in Leeds that you're yet to play that you'd quite like to play? I mean my number one venue in Leeds has always been the Broodnell, the Broodnell yeah. definitely, um, and yeah. we were really lucky in that the first show we ever played as a band a live band um, was there at the Broodnell in the That's pretty good going to be honest. It was it was, very well it was lucky, I was spoiled. It's hard to you know I guess I just think it's such a great venue and I mean I suppose the other room in the Broodnell would be, yeah, there would be yeah. a nice yeah. to play in every room. Uh, but yeah I think that's probably That's just like it's just history though, isn't it? Yeah. Like, Without a doubt. Like I we've mean, been like both of us have been at least for a long time, like Stuart like, went away for a little bit and came back. Mm -hmm. But like seeing shows in there for the last ten years has always been pretty like. Amazing. I was gonna say yeah, like yeah. who's the most like the best person that you've seen at Brood now because I'm sure you've seen quite a few. Uh, I saw a band called A Silver Man's Eye on there, which is God Speed You Black Emperors on the band. Oh right, yeah, cool. yeah, 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 yeah. I know um, what you're about now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And that was like amazing, kind of like the most like quietest mm -hmm. but loudest gig I've ever seen. Like it was to a point where they were playing guitar and like you could hear the guy like picking the strings on his guitar. It was like quiet. So yeah, it was pretty That's like it. yeah, yeah it, was, it was pretty That's intimate, really cool. but they were quite aggressive. So. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, I I think it's a good venue for aggressive music. Mm -hmm. Weirdly, yeah. Um, yeah. I saw a band called Health there, and it was the same. It was like punishingly loud, mm -hmm. and that room just seems to take it. It's crazy. Yeah, um, yeah Health Gold Panda was really good as well. Yeah. That was like a really good party. Because um, it does, I think it does well. It spans genres so easily, yeah, but yeah, you can okay. see like uh, yeah. side projects of someone from Godspeed, and then you can also go and see, you know, all that Lap Lux or Lap Lux yeah, or yeah. Uh, Toki Monster. That was yeah, a really yeah, good yeah, one yeah. a few years ago. I think that's quite legendary. The Daedalus Toki Monster. Game. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think, like you're saying, like j because people know of like the history, and, like how mm. iconic Brunel is. Yeah. I think the energy there it could be anyone, and it'd always be amazing just because of yeah. the event itself. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's it sells gigs. The venue yeah. people. Yeah. I know people that will go regardless of whether or not they know the yeah. artist. I'll Definitely. just go because it's, it's, it's pretty cheap. It's yeah, it is, yeah, cheap pints, weren't there yesterday? Cheap pints, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I was just gonna round it up by asking what you've got in the pipeline, basically. Any festivals, gigs, music plans for the future, basically? I know it's quite a big question. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've been pretty quiet, like, because obviously the name change kind of slowed yeah. things down a little bit. But we've got a new, a new EP out in a month, I believe it is. Cool. So it's gonna be on Finest Ego again. So that's all been like rounded up and mastered and finished, so that'd be quite nice. Oh, that's and then uh, just a ton of writing, really, and like kind of figuring out like what the next stage is, I suppose, mm -hmm. and like trying to like find out like kind of develop the sound, I suppose, to like be exactly where we want it to be. Yeah. I think it's been yeah. two EPs of like experimenting a little bit and like. They still sound great, but they're never quite where you want them to be. Yeah. They, so. I think it's nice to be at a point in the process where you're not exactly yeah. decided on where you stand. Yeah. Like I say, it gives you a chance yeah. to play about, doesn't it, before you sort yeah. of say this is us. That can be the negative of having like a ton of influences, though. Like if yeah. you've got so many inspirations, it's like you're constantly getting into new things, and then you're like, yeah, this is what it's going to sound like, and then you do it, and you're like, two months later, it's like, no, that's yeah, terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's a big part of electronic music as well, generally. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I suppose unlike a lot of other genres, still electronic music, you're in control of every aspect yeah. of the music. You know, uh, you, you're not neither specialise in any one instrument. So, yeah. you know, complete control over the the beats, the music, the production, everything. And then, I mean, we've been writing pretty much non-stop now for maybe three or four months, yeah. just piling up tracks, uh, ready to start whittling down what it is exactly we want. To, yeah. to do with them. You know, <laughs> where we want to take house it. round of X Factor with a little photo. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, it might come down to that at this point. <laughs> it gets pretty aggressive. Yeah. yeah. I guess that's, I think it'll be nice to look forward to being able to just all condense it and sort of finally come up with yeah. that yes. final piece. But yeah. I imagine quite scary as well. Yeah. yeah, I mean, committing to things is pretty intimidating. Um, and also, committing to a time frame mm -hmm. can be yep. so important for us. I suppose. One of the beautiful things about EPs are that 
they really only capture a point in time. You know, it's only yeah. four tracks. You can yeah. kind of put together your four favorite at any point, and it's not too much of a commitment. Whereas bigger releases later on, um, yeah. maybe. But even then, they're still only a marker. Yeah, it's yeah. where you were at that point, what you were listening to, what you were doing, what you were. So I guess trying to capture that is tricky because yeah. you can go on. Oh, fair enough. Well, it sounds like you've got a lot of sorting and whittling yeah. to do anyway. So I'm going to let you crack on. But thank you for talking to us today. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. And all the best for the future. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.